One thing I like to say is that I arrived at these conclusions of Revive about how it works and why it works based on logic and not on dentistry. I know basic TMJ dentistry, dentistry, I've talked to a lot of dentists over the years, but I'm not a dentist myself. I don't think you need to be. And I'll explain why, because I think at the end of the day, it's more or less a pure logic argument. I think teeth are only one piece of the equation, and you also have the jaw, the skull, the skeleton, neurology. These are all important pieces of the puzzle that you also need to understand because all this stuff works as a system. And the other piece, which I find is the most important to actually fixing the problem is what I call the soft tissue, which is skin, fascia, anything else, basically like covering the skull and, and, and your entire body. Right? And this is where I've spent a lot of time, like hundreds, if not thousands of hours testing myself, figuring out how this soft tissue works. That is something where I don't think there's someone out there that understands the soft tissue better than me. And that, in my view, is the key to actually solving the entire puzzle. Anyway, let me get into my argument. Why is this based on logic? So if you think about how I concluded this stuff, I used to have what I call a tracking splint, which is just a lower splint, right? You put it in your mouth, you bite on it with articulating paper, and then you get these contacts for your teeth, right? And so what I would do, and I learned this from a dentist back in like 2016, is I would then, I had a dental drill and I would drill, right? You drill these contacts even so that you have more or less the last three or four teeth making even contact. And then when you take the splint out, you see this curve, right? With the, with the four dots of where the four teeth make contact. And you see that both sides have contacts, right? And so then I would do experiments, like I would do yoga, or I would run, or I would go to an osteopath, right? And then I would check, and put it back on, articulating paper, bite, and then I would drill, because sometimes some contacts were missing. And I would see, like, how am I drilling? And I would see that every time I did things like yoga, or went to an osteopath or something, like the curve would improve. Like the, the curve, what I call the curve of speed, which just means that the back of this splint starts going up, right? So it was flatter and it starts going up and you're drilling that and I would notice that. And then I would also experiment with other things. Like I would lock my bite with, you know, a splint that locked my jaw forward or something like this. And I would notice that all of a sudden when I drilled the contacts even, it would flatten, right? Or when I left myself with an open bite, meaning an open posterior bite, it would also flatten. So I did this over a period of, you know, on and off for years. And I realized that, wow, like this is consistent. Certain things improve the curve of speed. Other things make it worse. And I also, you know, like my kid, my wife, other people that I was helping, like I noticed that these patterns stayed consistent for them as well. Could basically like draw some conclusions. All right, it's like, the, the other thing I noticed when I, when I, improve the curve, like lots of other things improved, like my complexion improved, my energy improved, I felt healthier, my spine and whatnot would improve. And when things flatten, I would start to feel worse, right? Cognitive function, neurological function, all these things would decline. Right? I got used to feeling this because I had done this so many times. Now I like to say that because of this, the chances that I'm wrong are pretty small. Because I've done this and I, I view it as a simple logical argument. Like step, there is a two-step argument, right? One is if you put a rubber mouth guard in a person's mouth, does their curve of speed increase? Right? And you should be tracking this with like a tracking splint or something. Is that step one? Step two is if a person's curve of speed increases, does their health and whatnot improve the same way it did with me? And if it flattens, does it get worse, right? So these are the only two things that you basically need to validate are not just exceptions that happen to me, but rather are consistent with everybody else. And if those two things are true of every human being out there, you can basically conclude everything I've concluded with Revive. Like, I, there is no way I can be wrong, in my view, because it's pure logic. And dentists are going to argue with me, right? They're going to, like, start trying to drag me into, like, dental debates. And I'm just not interested. Like, they, they love you as using this fear-mongering. Like, you should think about this. Or you should think about that. They're like, I don't care, right? Like, I laid out two arguments. Like, you either say that one of them are wrong and you tell me explicitly why or I don't care what you're saying and they can never like the fact is like I tried this in my own mouth I saw this on various other people like I know these things are correct and so they cannot refute it and so therefore I don't really care what they say 
right? Like they can talk all day. And like my general view on dentists, because I got screwed around a lot in the early years, like I just don't care what they think. Or th like they mean nothing to me, right? So like my general opinion towards it is just like fuck off. Like I don't give a shit what you think. Another thing I like to say is like, I call it bringing a gun to a knife fight, right? Dentists, like, they've got these knives, which are, like, everything they've been taught in dental school, right? And here I am, like, I'm this guy who doesn't give a shit about any of that. Like, I don't care what you've learned in dental school. It means nothing to me because I don't even view this problem as, like, this problem is only partially dental. And so for me, the gun is logical thinking, first principles. I'm going to lay this out logically. And if that works and ends up being consistent with every person, then I don't need any of your dental arguments because they're just completely useless. So anyway, this is how I view it. And I've, you know, argued with my fair share of dentists in the past. And now I don't even waste my time because I just, their opinion means absolutely nothing to me. Now, if you think about what, like the two arguments that I laid out logically before, then think about the other, like, let's follow on from there. So if when people's curvus B improves, you generally see that like they're able to get rid of disease and prevent more disease from occurring. And you can see that that's consistently the case, which I am seeing, right? And I'm using my group, which is increasing to prove that to be the case. Then you can generally conclude that, yes, maybe this is the root cause of disease, right? Like if you can get rid of disease and prevent it in others who are typically very susceptible to it, then perhaps this collapse that I talk about is the cause of disease. Well, another one is like, so all the typical signs of aging are reversing on me for the last few years. And it's happened every time I've improved. I see it happening with others. So if you can reverse the aging process consistently when you improve their curve of speed, perhaps this is what aging is, right? Maybe aging is just this collapse process. I actually think like I'm very sure that that is going to turn out to be the case. And the other thing is like, if you can continue to improve your symmetry and your skeleton improves, then maybe this stuff is the root cause of beauty, right? Like beauty is just symmetry, having your skeleton in the correct proportions and, and alignment. And if this brings it back, then perhaps beauty is not genetic or not a function of your age or how much exercise you did. It is purely a function of these biomechanics, right? And that is another, you know, hypothesis that I want to prove in the coming years. And like, from my viewpoint, these are not some wild speculations. Like these are things that I've already seen to be the case pretty consistently. And I'm seeing more and more with my test group and so far, nothing I've seen in the 150 plus that I have have now bought Revive refute that. And so it's very logical for me to say, yes, these things are not only possible, they are highly likely to be true. And if you think about the found, like what is revived, right? Like people ask me, okay, like, Ken, you're selling a mouth guard. But that's not how I view it at all. Like I view, you know, look at revive as this is the main thesis is that the foundation of human health is fundamentally wrong in my, my point of view, right? There is a physical collapse that occurs with the skeleton and the skull because of these biomechanics that relate to how your teeth come together in this curve of speed that I talk about. So when the curvus B flattens, this collapse process happens, and that collapse process is the root cause of disease and aging and asymmetry. And so by essentially, since it's just physics, you can reverse this process with physics. And that is what Revive is. And so if you, if you take a step back at what my overall vision is, I am talking about something that I view as no less than perhaps the most transformational concept in the history of human medicine, and probably even science, right? Like when you think about the repercussions, if I'm right on all the things I've just said, right? You can prevent disease. This is all aging is, and therefore we can live for a very, very long time, very healthy. This is what beauty is, and so we can all be beautiful human beings, right? Like those things, if you think like second, third effects of that, like it changes the world on a level that nothing in the history of humanity has come even close to. Do I think that's going to happen in my lifetime? Definitely not going to happen in the next 10 to 20 years. Like it's going to take a long time. But I think if you follow this path out, some very interesting things can be concluded. And when I say these things, I was saying these things even like years ago, people would laugh at me. They think like I was crazy, right? Now with Revive, a lot of people are improving. People are laughing less, but in some years, when this whole thing explodes a lot bigger, I don't think they're going to be laughing at all. I think we're all going to be laughing at just how stupid the current medical system is.